Community guidelines. guidelines, Brittany and Sarah. Yeah, <laughs> we are your local non-experts um, here to talk to you about furries. Today's topic is the fan favorite furries. Mm-hmm. So true. Um, Brittany actually wanted to talk about furries because you have a yeah. What is your interest with furries? Here's my thing, guys. Yeah. All right, I love the idea of escapism. Yeah, in whatever form. And we've talked about this before a little bit. Mm-hmm. Drag. Um, alter egos. Disney adults. Dis- All right. Enough. No, Disney adults <laughs> isn't like a form of escapism. It is escapism. Yeah. This idea of leaving your current state of reality because it is awful mm-hmm. and entering into a quasi fantasy land of your own creation. Yeah. Really intrigues me. Um, I read fan fiction for that same reason Mm -hmm. and we're gonna do a separate episode on (laughs) fiction but in the same vein is furries and i've wanted to talk about furries for a long time because i just find it so interesting and Mm -hmm. i find it very wholesome actually yeah i think we both do yes yeah it's it's pitched as this because we like first and foremost disclaimer we don't want to offend anyone who's actually in the furry community or the furry fandom um we recognize it as its own huge phenomenon yeah and the identities are very valid Mm -hmm. and all that so we mean no offense but we do want to point out (laughs) some of the weird because it's very Mm non-conventional it really is i think it's like um i understand why you would want to be a furry similar to like drag queens whenever i watch interviews with them it's like you're trying the burden of self-expression like comes off of you because oftentimes like even just shit posting on the internet that is me and so like if someone insults my creativity or like what i like it really hurts so like if you put on an appearance whether it be makeup or drag or you know you can take off yeah it's this is this person now this um it's completely separate from like your actual like identity which you may i mean it could be like you're trying to escape like a not so ideal like identity or it could be like you want to express yourself in a very different way right yeah and it is art and however the way you define art yes so all that being said Mm -hmm. furries for those who don't know The furry fandom is a subculture interested in anthropomorphic animal characters with human personalities and characteristics, very much like animation. Yes. Thinking Zootopia. (laughs) They exhibit human intelligence and facial expressions, speaking and walking on two legs, and they wear clothes. Sometimes. The furry fandom is also used to refer to the community of people who gather on the internet and at furry conventions or otherwise participate in the subculture. Individual members of the fandom are known as furries. Mm Mm-hmm. I like that there's a um, first science website dedicated to researching the furry fandom in a courteous manner. Research for adults to use to understand the fandom, made specifically for outsides to get a better understanding of the fandom itself without being harmful to others, especially minors. And this is literally like, it's research. It is psychological, sociological research that real scientists have done on the whole kind of mentality of Mm -hmm. the fandom. Furdom. The fur, yeah, furry, yeah, fandom, furdom. Fan, the furry fandom. Um, so they like address the stigma. The IARP's years of research indicate that the furry fandom has prevented youth from committing suicide, and yet furries, when known about, occupy a disproportionately but ironically a socially acceptable stigmatized position in the mainstream culture. Yeah, I feel like in the past couple of years, it's furries are used to be so made fun of, and now yeah. it's kind of like oh, they're just there. They're just yeah, well, they're, they're fine. They're not hurting anybody. <laughs> <laughs> furries experience stigma due in part to visually unique nature of furries in conjunction with incendiary sensationalist media portrayal portrayals which cast furries and the fandoms as deviant sexual fetishes mm. so i'm gonna make a tangent on this yeah. this is a straight person thing yeah so like when someone does drag you know they're like is it a sex thing are y'all fucking in it <laughs> ask any drag queen most of them will say no, because you're you want to have sex with a character, mm-hmm. and when I take this off, that's who I am. You know, you don't know me behind the mask. But whenever <laughs> straight people see something unusual, they're like, "Is it a sex thing?" You know, like furries drag. It, I mean, there can be sexual elements to it, obviously, but it's not like what it is, and that's just like white people. Yeah, Christians are like, "Is it the devil? Yeah, is it sex? Are y'all putting penises <laughs> in them suits? Oh my god!" <laughs> 
<laughs> Disney adults fucking in Mickey ears. Well, no, Disney adults, a lot of people are like, is that sexual too? It's like, no, they're not acting like, it's just like they're trying to escape a certain reality. There is yeah. some sexual element to it because everyone's adults here for the most part. I'm like, let me answer on behalf of the Disney adults. Yeah. <laughs> I talk for behalf of this like gay people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the fandom is broad enough to cover anything. It comes down to being about friendship and community, which makes the mainstream media's reduction of the fandom to a fetish insulting and categorically mm-hmm. dem- dem- demonstrable inaccuracy. This also reminds me of ASMR. ASMR, if you know a lot of people, it's like the whisper videos on YouTube. They help you fall asleep. Mm-hmm. But the reason, like people think it's a sexual thing. There are sexual ASMR role plays. But for the most part, ASMR like calms you down, you mm-hmm. know. So it's like anytime there's something unusual, people are like, "It's a sex thing." Because humans are just sexual creatures. I think it's no. I think it's just like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. right. So we the tend to, especially if it's something you don't understand. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, what are they doing? <laughs> I walk into algebra, so it's a sex thing. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are doing this to fuck each other. Um, these inaccurate portrayals combined with the public's unfamiliarity with the fandom make many furries reasonably fear discrimination and violence uh, reasonably uh, yeah so many furries have faced emotional physical and bullying due to ignorance and intentional misrepresentations which meme culture definitely yeah facilitated the bullying I mean meme culture just makes fun of anything oh anything that breathes yeah Millie Bobby wants. Brown accidentally like you know <laughs> That phenomenon, for those who don't know, there's this meme that Millie Bobby Brown is homophobic yeah. and says the F slur for fun. <laughs> and it's totally baseless. Like, it, there's nothing that started it. It's just someone was like, this would be a funny thing. And yes. then they just ran, and now Millie's like, has to filter her comments like on Instagram. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, <laughs> meme culture is so crazy. Um, I th- uh, Okay, so furry fandom research using the scientific method. Again, this is from first science. <laughs> yeah. Like, li- like this is real scientific research. Imagine just like you've been berated so you're like, dude, let's actually hire scientists. <laughs> you know, like when you like check out at CVS, they're like, do you want to donate three dollars to like some yeah, foundation? It's like it's going to. you check out at Spencer's, they donate three dollars to like first science. <laughs> To, like, research, like, guys, furries are real. Also, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, so, sexual orientation. Evidence suggests that, in general, people are accepted in the furry fandom fandom regardless of their sexual orientation. While there is sometimes the perception that members of the LGBTQ community are the most strongly accepted members of the fandom, evidence suggests that, while there are indeed significant differences between the straight and non-straight members of the fandom, furries are generally accepted and welcomed within the community regardless of orientation. So, I would be accepted? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they have like furry allies. Oh, I'm a furry ally. <laughs> but um, I don't know why they would see it as like okay. So, as speaking as a gay, I think maybe they associate with gays because like gays are often like an outcast, especially when you're younger. So they're like, oh, gays, furries, theater kids, yeah. you know, Disney, no, definitely. <laughs> Disney people. Dude, yeah, <laughs> they're all just you know that all well to known subsection of gay <laughs> Disney adult furry loving communists yeah it's like um how i'm a millennial but like in like harry potter there's like you know courage like a gryffindor slytherin and then miss like uh fucking hufflepuff is just all the miscellaneous kids yeah hufflepuff is all the furries but, yeah <laughs> all the is. gay kids and theater kids it is cedric diggory was a furry <laughs> his first one would have been a snake yeah oh that would have been ironic yeah let's keep going do you want to talk about gender disparity yeah so Given that the furry fandom is predominantly male, which shocked me, Mm -hmm. because I generally think of the cute little furry girls, because it's either the full furry suit, which has the the, uh, bodysuit, paws, feet, tail, and then the head that you put over. We haven't described this. If you've never seen a furry, imagine a high school or college mascot. But it's but like that's offensive. That's well, no, I, okay. I'm saying like this is what you imagine. Like you put something on, like yeah. so you become like a lion. They're not the same thing. It's just like if you've never seen it, this would be like a visual, like yeah, yeah. Parallel. The physical descriptor is yes. that of a mascot. They are not actually mascots. Yeah. Yes. Mascot for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> for your identity. Um. They're- anyway, yeah, it's predominantly male. The fandom itself may be seen by female furries as a male space, which is shocking as well. Men seem to be more likely to feel a strong sense of belonging in the furry fandom to the mm-hmm. point where they feel little need to look outside the fandom for friends or other needs. It's all encompassing. All you could ever need. But is this actually that strange? Because there are, okay, the patriarchy, etc. For mm-hmm. like women and 
people are socialized as women there's a lot more way like creative outlets to express yourself you mm. know like with makeup and these sort of things mm -hmm. i mean men did it to themselves but like why men feel maybe secure is because like they're actually like it's a form of creative expression you yeah. know like they want to do something else but like you know what that I'm other men have deemed acceptable yeah in that community yes um yeah in that vein like women experience less of this or fem i don't I hate that he put females here yeah <laughs> Um, Our research guy on, is, Stanley. is an incel. <laughs> he females. Said females. <laughs> um, experience less of this, perhaps in part because the fandom may seem less welcoming to them mm -hmm. or less like a place that fulfills their social needs entirely the way that it does for men. It's very interesting. Like furry um, the community, like kind of like mirrors like a gym. You know, very much. <laughs> you feel not welcome there. Like yeah. there should be like women only fur furry areas. Yeah. I um, have you ever done a furry test? I have never done. I really want to do one. We should do one live on on tape. Yeah, yeah. I've done mine. What you are a? Yeah. So my persona is a blue fox. Uh, he's a man, uh -huh. <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> Served in the military. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why. Um, and he's got a puffy white tail, and he slays. That's so interesting. <laughs> Your furry is a veteran. He's he's an expat veteran. You're, oh my god! Imagine like you're at the VA looking for your benefits, and there's just a blue fox furry like. Yeah, it's me in full like what's it? Charlie Tango's yeah. <laughs> whatever. I'm, it is. I'm here for my hazard pay. <laughs> Imagine deploying a furry to the Middle East. <laughs> it's a little on the front lines. Oh, yes. Thank me for my service. <laughs> okay, so they also research psychological <laughs> conditions. Sorry, keep going. That's our sponsor for today. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> so there are, like, they looked into psychological conditions. There is little relationship between furries and the clinical diagnosis of psychological dysfunction. Across several studies, furries did not differ significantly from the general population with regard to the prevalence of psychological conditions. As such, it is incorrect to define or try to explain furries by the presence of any particular psychological condition or through any type of psychological dysfunction, as the data does not support such claims. I'm glad that the that's included because i feel like that if it's not sexual then it's well you're just fucking weird There's or so, something's yeah. wrong with you and when you view it through the lens of this as artistic expression uh-huh self-expression yes. as you said then that i mean that makes sense that makes this make sense i think furries seem so outlandish because most of society can't wrap their mind around hobbies yeah you know you bought a banjo and like i, I tweeted did. about it and people were like oh that's cool and then someone was like banjo i was like yeah it's fun it is. imagine someone like i mean never at a party if you ever brought a banjo to a party i'd actually probably like leave. a sue <laughs> and he, here's wonderwall on a banjo <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it's just like it's like a hobby um but it, it's an expensive hobby i feel like too it is i feel like actually the prices associated with having a full fursuit made yeah. also where <laughs> I think Where? I looked it up Etsy. Oh, then that makes sense. Um, and I also looked up like the average price of like a lower, like lower scale fursuit is like eleven hundred to two thousand oh dollars. But, but it's imagine, for life. Yeah, <laughs> that's your membership card. But you know, like how um, what's that like Potato Head, Mr. Potato Head? You can like switch out his eyes and his face. Yeah. I wonder if you can like switch out like different. I mean, there's different outfits, obviously. Sure. But like different attachments. You have like a claw hand one day. Right. <laughs> I patch. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about before we get into like the technical terms of like being a furry or like what they y y terms they use. Um, I can understand why you would want to be a furry. Oh, absolutely. You ever seen like a really hot cartoon growing up? Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. I personally love Spirit the Horse. Spirit the Horse is sexy, and it got me banned from Twitter. I, yeah, the last thing you ever, <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you ever tweeted on your old account was like a picture of Spirit the Horse, and then like minutes later your account was banned. I was like, what? They took away my check mark. <laughs> <laughs> my whole account for months because i said maybe he's kind of hot i mean he is hot like is. i uh, what's like another like hot like i know um nick wilde from zootopia oh yeah he's a cutie he's hot because it's jason bateman Ooh, that bunny that's a cop Big judy hops what is up with like Thick. yeah animators love giving like female characters a huge ass yeah the, it's the miss incredible thing yeah. <laughs> judy hops jessica rabbit lola bunny the hot fish from shark tale mm-hmm all of them have the same body type. They just have massive y yitties and an ass. And, and the like fox eye. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're just so hot. They're all so cute. And even like from Shark Tales, that female fish from Shark yeah, Tales. Yeah, that's what I said. She's Gorgina. Wait, is that what you said? Yeah, at the very end. Oh my God. <laughs> I need to Can listen. Can you see me? <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> Am I here? 
<laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, I can understand. Okay, I so I can understand how animals in their animated form can be attractive. Sure. I don't think I would see a real life animal and think. No, that's kind of. It has to sound like Jason Bateman for me to be on board. Yeah, there has to be like a funny little suit and tie. Yeah. So it's like, oh, human. Right. Human animal. You know my latest Bojack Horseman. Really? Sexy. It. Why? Because he's broken. He's. But that's just his. That's just like. Uh, what's that guy who voices him? Uh, Will Arnett. Yeah, that you just love Will Arnett. He's an yeah. ugly horse. No, he's not. I've seen some cute animated horses <laughs> in my time. And Bojack Horseman is amongst the ugliest. Okay, but hear me out. Washed up actor, rich, uh huh, forty uh, something, tall. I don't just the way they animated him and his dad too. I was like, what are you guys doing? I think as a hot. as a gay person, never do I see a broken man and think I want to know more. <laughs> You know? Now tell me more <laughs> about you. I'm like, I've seen and heard enough. Yeah. I'm going to better myself. <laughs> I haven't uh, gotten to that stage of self-help. Yeah. Where I no longer am attracted to broken men. <laughs> Working on it, guys. When do you think you'll hit that point? Never. Okay. <laughs> but I'm always striving for it. Right. Um, so let's talk about the online presence of furries. Um, yeah. There are several different websites. Fur Affinity. It's the furry fandom's largest online community hosting artwork, animations, literature, and music all dedicated to the furry fandom. It was created in 2005 by, by Alcora. Um, that's really interesting. They have, like, you know, community artwork, animations, literature. It sounds like... <laughs> I Some of the artwork is beautiful. Oh, my gosh. This is... I know we didn't want to focus on the sexual part, but... The furries are notorious. Like, they're known for paying a lot of money to, like, get furry porn. Yeah. And so, like, artists don't really like drawing it, but they pay so well. They're, like, all... Like, I, I follow so many artists who are, like, oh I don't want to draw furry porn, but they pay me so well. I'll do it. <laughs> so many thousands of dollars. Yes. Sorry. I have never seen a more detailed, girthy, long <laughs> dick <laughs> than looking at furry porn they're not even furry imagine a furry penis i yeah do okay so fursuits do they have you know genitalia as Holes? well yeah because if, if this is your first sona wouldn't you want it be to be as accurate to your you know vision as possible do fursuits have holes why not make a big dick on a furry if like you're already buying the suit you know, you're already wearing a furry suit. No one's going to be like, oh, the dick was too much. Yeah. You know? Put it away, man. <laughs> Come on. You're an eight foot gray elephant <laughs> at VidCon. <laughs> Just add a dick, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Have, off topic. Have you ever seen a horse dick? Yes, I have, unfortunately. They're so big. Yeah. For what reason? I think it's. You make me think about dicks. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I think it's still like because they're such a big animal and the, they have to get on top of the other animal. Oh, I guess they do. You know what's? Uh, you know it's a creepy dick. You ever seen a cat dick? No. It's a uh, it's prickly, because it's so tiny it has to stick in the female cats, and so like when cats have sex it hurts, and that's why they meow so loud. No, that's misogynistic. I know that's so rude. God is a Dopey's dick. Dopey's a dirty misogynist. <laughs> Dopey has no balls. My cat has no balls. But he's a penis. Um, yeah, but I've never seen it. Oh yeah. You know what's uh, funny? When I was younger, I had a cat named Pumpkin, and I saw its deflated. Like, I, well, I saw its like balls, and I thought it was his butt cheeks. So I came up behind and I pinched his little butt cheeks. I pinched his nut, <laughs> and he was like, "Because <laughs> <"Wah!" laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it just looked like a little furry butt." You so it's like a sack tap to your cat. <laughs> <laughs> but no so on this website there's like so much art it seems like a lot of it's like professional and amateur but a lot of it's really good um i found an answer to my question yes some fursuits are called mersuits and have specifically placed holes to facilitate sex oh i was assuming that mersuit was about to be a mermaid thing oh that would slay a <laughs> fish you drown yes! <laughs> oh mersuits so they have like holes and stuff like, but is it, okay, is it holes for the furry costumes or do they actually reach either's genitalia? It depends how thick the fabric is, I'm assuming. Yeah, I imagine if you have a large, bast animal, yeah. it would be hard to like. Yeah, you got to take it off at some <laughs> point. Just drop the draw. Keep the head on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the tail. The hand, hands, yeah. Yeah. Um, for Sonas, okay, so um, 
Wait, wait. There are other websites for furry content. E621. It's a website designed to archive and redistribute furry and anthropomorphic content. It is known for its pornographic materials. I hate stressing that there is a lot of sex that goes on because it just feels like a straight thing to do. You know, like these people have genuine interests. They invested so much time and money and we're just like, do y'all fuck in that suit? Yeah, what do y'all? Does it get hot? <laughs> do you sweat? Stanley um, included a beautiful link for us and I made the mistake of clicking on it so I'm just going to exit out of that thank you <laughs> Google browser now tracking my search history yes. thank you so much you get recommended on like you like Shein like fursuits oh man <laughs> like, oh, Shein fursuits they don't fit <laughs> it disintegrates when I start sweating <laughs> So the fandoms are called fursonas. It's a portmanteau. Again, love the word portmanteau. Derived from the terms furry and persona. Furry characters, personas, alter egos, avatars, or identities assumed by a person or player normally associated with the furry fandom based on various animal species, whether real or fictional. Mm -hmm. What's crazy is that, like, so I, I'm drawing a lot of parallels with, like, drag about, like, how there's, like, a persona and, like, you know, this is, you know, glittery diamond and, you know, please welcome to the stage, that sort of yeah. thing. Why isn't there, like, a drag race for furries? Did we just create a show concept? Yeah, America's Next Top Furry. America's Next, yeah. Furry Superstar? Yeah. I mean, but what would they do? What would the challenges be? It's hosted by Tyra Banks. <laughs> Crossing the street. <laughs> what do what do a furry do? I think it's just you just exist in the suit, you know? Uh, yeah, what challenges would there be? You have to forage nuts and berries. <laughs> Um, or like, yeah, create a, like a complex like timeline or like a backstory. Yeah. Oh, but you're assigned a fursuit. Oh, so that would suck. Well, I mean, like you're, but it's like every other week, you know, one time you're assigned a fursuit, you have to come up with a backstory mm. or like another is like you have to make the costume. That would be <laughs> this fun. This is just like an improv class you, in Hollywood. You <laughs> lip sync for your life in a furry suit. <laughs> come on. There's a reveal and underneath your fursuit is another fursuit. <laughs> yeah! And then underneath that is Roxy Andrews. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just different animals under each layer, like a Russian nesting doll. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to talk about the history. Yes. Because we've talked about topically, you know, what they are and kind of the culture. Yes. But this isn't a new phenomenon. No. Like this, we've always, humans have always had an obsession with like this concept of an anthropomorphic mm -hmm. being. Yes. Um, even dating back as far as like think cave paintings or like Egyptology, you yeah. know, like sphinxes and all that and the animal heads on a human body. And there's something um, regal about it as well. Yeah. At least back then. So... Oh, would they be so pleased to know what it's become today? <laughs> so like I was saying, this has been around for quite a while. The term furry itself originated at a science fiction convention in 1980. Damn. So that's what, 41 years ago? Oh my God. Some furry fans consider the origins of the furry fandom to be much earlier with fictional works such as Kimba, The White Lion, or even Disney's Robin Hood. Robin Hood, yeah, it, did me, it gave me like a little itch down there. Yeah, sexy and hot, mm -hmm. I will admit. <laughs> During the 1980s, furry fans developed a diverse social group that eventually began to schedule social gatherings. And in 1989, there was sufficient interest to stage the first furry convention. There's, f like, footage of it. Yeah, it's called Conference Zero. Conference. And confer <laughs> Conference Zero. But um, basically, it's this person with a cat or rabbit head on mm -hmm. dancing in, like, a bit of, like, lingerie. Slay. Yeah, which seems... <laughs> Um, and then our uh, research assistant was like kind of kind of a baddie. They yeah. are kind of a baddie, yeah. Honestly, maybe everyone's a little bit of a furry deep down. I yeah, I feel like if okay, so um, cosplay is another thing that like kind mm. of like parallels like furries. For Halloween, I had this really slutty but historically accurate French like old French costume with like all these layers and like the um, the. What's that thing? Corset. Corset. And it was like, I understand why cosplayers do what they want to do. You looked great. There's something, I mean, dressing up is fun, but dressing up like so well that yeah. like people understand exactly what you're going for is yeah. so powerful. Yeah. So I can understand, if I can understand cosplayers, I can understand furries. Yeah. You know? I, I definitely get it. I get the whole idea of, <laughs> no one likes me when I take off the mask. <laughs> like whatever <laughs> it is, like when you have it on, it's, it's your defense against the world. Mm -hmm. I definitely get that. Um, and with the creation and accessibility of the internet, the general population uh, became the most popular means for furry fans to socialize. Mm -hmm. And still to this day, 
And whenever I see a furry on my TikTok timeline, I throw him a light. <laughs> <laughs> I throw a dog a bone. Yeah. It, like, it takes so much, like, courage, but it's also, like, kind of fun. I don't know. It's, like, lighthearted, but yeah. really fun. So authentically you. Mm-hmm. Be your I true want, self. I want you to take the fursona test. All right. So there's one on BuzzFeed, which I feel like is not, like, pretty accurate. Should I yeah. take another one? Probably. I took a couple. <laughs> I had to make sure my results were accurate. Is this going to be one of those things where I have to put in my email and then they like email no. me like furry? Just do the BuzzFeed one. Okay, I'm going to do the BuzzFeed one and find out what my fursona is. Okay, so this is by BuzzFeed. Which unique fursona should you have? And should then, I take it too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we can read the questions out loud. All right. <laughs> First ever question, as it should be, favorite Zootopia character. Personally, I think Judy Hopps is mine. <laughs> Wait, no, Gazelle is in it too. Yeah, Gazelle's hot. Oh, she's hot. hot. Wait, is that just Shakira as a Gazelle? I think so. Mm. Try everything. Uh, 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 uh. Remember that song? Yeah, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I um, I can't. I, I mean, Judy Hopps, but my mom's name is Judy. No, you know that's fuck it. I don't care. I'm picking Nick Wilde. How would your friends describe you? Funny, smart, cute, awkward, shady, complex. Ew, imagine texting your best friend. You're like, what word would you use to describe me? Complex. Complicated. <laughs> Problematic. Miscellaneous. Ashy. <laughs> Rashy. <laughs> Miscellaneous. Hot. At all. We're sweaty. Okay, I'm going to say funny. I'll say funny as well. All right, don't copy me. Favorite social media <laughs> platform? Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, or Pinterest? What is your favorite? You know, I do love Instagram. Yeah. I fucking love Instagram. But I'm going to pick Tumblr for posterity's sake. I'm going to choose Twitter because I'm a sick fuck. You are. You are. Uh, Those people want me dead. Yeah. I've you're been a on tweet that for way too long. <laughs> um, pick a regular fursona. Wolf, bear, panther, lion, leopard, or ferret. You strike me as leopard. Leopard? Yeah. Why? You just do. Because the discoloration? Yeah. The patchiness. <laughs> I think, um, okay, of all these, you're definitely not a wolf or bear. I want to be a wolf. You're a lion. Do you think? I can see lion. Or you're a th- ferret. Okay, <laughs> lion or fer- ferret? Lion or ferret? I'm going to say, what you said leopard for me? Yeah. I guess I could see it. It's I'm sexy. Really, I'm not a wolf. And there's only, well, I mean, you could be a wolf. I think it's funny, but it's not you. Inside of you are two wolves. <laughs> <You're> Balto. <laughs> <laughs> so so <laughs> okay. Fine, I'll pick lion. Um, I'm gonna choose leopard. Pick a Netflix TV show. Orange is the new black. They knew I was oh, coming. Oh, they put Bojack Horseman <laughs> on here. You know I'm black clicking mirror. that. Wait, Black Mirror, Queer Eye, The End of the Fucking <laughs> World, Unbreakable, Kimmy Schmidt, and Bojack Horseman. Yeah. They're targeting the gay kids. They are. I'm gonna say Orange is the new black. Um, pick a name for your fursona. Okay. Nugget, Llama Del Rey. Oh, Llama Del Rey's good. Virginia Woolf. They, they are targeting the gay kids. Yeah. Chad. Drusilla, the goddess of hell. What? <laughs> Princess. It's like, what's that thing from, uh, it, like, Nandor the Relentless? <laughs> I love anything that's the, like, some yeah. random, like... Drusilla, the goddess, goddess of, of hell. hell. I, I want to do Virginia Woolf, but I, I'm going to say Drusilla. Yeah, you're Drusilla. I'm Nugget. <laughs> Pick a place to visit. Bora Bora, England, Italy, New York, Thailand, or Iceland. They misspelled Thailand. No, they didn't. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> so, I was like, they spelled it Thailand. <laughs> I say that you were England. That's fair. Um, I'm, a, I'm not Bora Bora because I do not like the beach. England, I don't really like the English. I would say New York, but you don't really. No, New York freaks me out. It feels claustrophobic. Yeah. Um, fuck. I'm going to say. Iceland. Iceland, yeah cold and by myself yeah pretty occasionally when the lights come on yeah (laughs) for two hours a day (laughs) what's your typical friday night partying watching netflix sleeping gossiping with friends reading or going shopping is blacking out in west hollywood another option (laughs) this is really for the gays i think partying could be like a good um yeah i'll go with partying i'm gonna say gossiping with friends hmm because I do like to talk shit on my free nights. It is fun. Mm-hmm. Pick your favorite food. Pizza, lobster roll, lasagna, sandwich, ramen, or pad thai. Who the fuck is like, you know what I'm craving right now? A lobster roll. <laughs> but on a soggy hot dog bun? That's specifically... Yeah, it's a picture of a lobster roll on a hot dog bun. Ooh. Imagine like walking down the streets of New York City and there's like a lobster roll vendor. <laughs> is that bitch eating <laughs> lobster? <laughs> Fresh from the Hudson. <laughs> this shit will give you three eyes. Um, lasagna's too heavy, so I'm going to say pad thai. I'm going to go with pad thai as well. Okay, wow. 
And then finally, choose some dessert. Cookies, tiramisu, chocolate cake, creme brulee, apple pie, or s'mores. If you like apple pie, you're a racist motherfucker. I, okay, well now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say creme brulee, because that's just like. I, stop picking what I want to pick. I know, I, no, I was going to say creme brulee makes you a weirdo. Well, I'm picking creme brulee, so fuck you. Imagine like all the utensils you need to eat, like dessert, you know, spoon, fork, a blowtorch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> flamethrower. I'm going to say cookies because I'm basic and That's I fair. hate eating sweet things. Okay. All right. So, oh God. Damn it. <gasps> What'd you get? What'd you get? Toucan. I got a toucan. <laughs> <laughs> it's rigged and all you can get is a toucan. Well, who the fuck is in a bird suit at a furry convention? They're not even furry. Are, yeah, that's true. They have feathers. We're part of the um, aviary uh, fursonas. That kind of is everything. A beak, a big fat beak. <laughs> I make fun of bird people all the time. It's only like fitting that I let's take another one because I feel like this yeah, is not this correct. One sucked. Um, <laughs> I don't feel re- represented. <laughs> um, Do the pro profs one. Pro profs. Okay, so this is which animal could be your persona? Start taking the quiz. Um, so firstly, do you consider yourself to be more feminine, masculine, or neutral? There you go. For all the NBs. I'm gonna say neutral for me. I'm gonna say feminine. Uh, next. Do you consider yourself to be an introvert or extrovert? Introvert, extrovert, middle ground. I'm going to say middle ground. Really? I feel like you and I are very sociable, but my social battery runs out real fast. Mm-hmm. I'd say like I'm great at mirroring people. That's an ADHD thing. Mm. But like if I'm alone, I just like, I'm going to say middle ground. Yeah. <laughs> You're alone just talking out loud. <laughs> um, how often do you greet, act around new people? Aggressive and defensive until they seem cool enough to keep talking to? <laughs> or how do you greet new people how do you act around new people who the fuck meets someone new and is aggressive and defensive (laughs) hi my name's sarah is it is it shut (laughs) up who fucking asked says who (laughs) um the next option is very quiet i might not even reply when they talk to me confident smiling and polite confident laughing and joking around that's yeah, i'll do that one i actually yeah because confident i try to make people like me as soon as i get oh, to know me them too. and then when they when they laugh at like something i only run with those jokes from like the rest of the night yeah. on do yeah. you do the thing where we're doing the same answers we're gonna come up with a toucan again <sighs> are we just twin flames <laughs> we're just twin toucans <laughs> <laughs> two, two toucans on a pod <laughs> um I do the thing where when I meet someone new or if I'm in a group of people I don't know, I'm just laughing. Mm-hmm. Not a single thing anyone has said is genuinely funny, but I'm laughing to put people at ease. Yeah. Like someone could say the most dumb shit and I'll be like, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll fake it. Well, I mean, that's your like laugh is like very disarming where like people like relax. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't like everything. I think I'm too self-conscious to just start laughing out of nowhere. And also my laugh is just like polarizing and also i don't know i love your laugh it's, it's contagious it's dumb but i um but do I, you do that if you're if you mirror people do you do that to put people at ease to therefore like you as yeah a means to an end i mean i think i'm a libra so i just want to be liked by all people so i try to like this is gonna sound so fake i try to like become like what they're looking for in the person that they're talking to oh yeah so like if i start laughing and they start laughing i can like keep making jokes sure, but you're if, not a gemini <laughs> No, Geminis are not whatever. Um, but like, they're all also an air sign. Mm. So fuck you. But um, no, no, no. I just like, but if they're a serious person, I'm also going to be serious. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to change. She start giggling in their face. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like the most stone serious person. The trolley problem. Are you fucking kidding me? I, like, I pulled that lever so quick. All right, yeah. So I'm going to say confident, laughing, and joking around. Why are there two slightly defensive options? The person writing this is in a terrible mood. <laughs> Who's super cagey when you meet them? Yeah. How often do you get out of the house? Every day or night slash night, um, almost every day slash night, about 50-50, a few times each week, a few times a month, maybe once or twice a year. What are you, a fucking recluse? They included everyone who's agoraphobic. Yeah. Um, I, a few times a week. Yeah, how often do I, I'm gonna, I try to go outside a couple times a week, yeah. No, we're gonna get the same thing. I'm gonna say about 50-50. Okay. Next. Um, how many friends would you say you have? Oh my god. 50 plus? I kind of want to pick that. <laughs> what? Is that weird? But, uh, no. And then there's 20 to 49, 10 to 19, 7 to 9, 4 to 6, 2 to 3, 1, and then 0. You can, I mean, like... 0 to be a, uh, to be different. I have friends, but, like, I wouldn't consider them close friends, but I would still consider them friends. So I'm going to say 20 to 49. I'm, I picked that too. Fuck off. <laughs> Let's just see what we get. We get the Fruit Loops bird. Um, Opinion on food. I would marry food if I could. This was written by a millennial. No offense. 
Food is amazing, but it hurts when I eat too much. <laughs> Shout out to all my binge eating disorder <laughs> girls out there. <laughs> I love food, but I know to be careful and not eat too much. I love food, but know to be careful about what I eat and how much I eat. Food's okay. Need to live, I guess. Food burns my insides. That's you. I'm going to say food's okay. Needed to live, I guess. I hate eating. I think one of the things that I, I, everything tastes dry. I mean, I didn't have COVID or anything. It's just like I have ADHD and like, it's almost like a chore. And to I focus on what you're eating. Yeah. But I know that if I don't eat in the morning or in the middle of the day, I'll get like really weird. The shakes. Yeah. And like irritable. So I'm going to say food's okay. Needed to live, I guess. I'm clicking my binge eating disorder girls. <laughs> I love food and I eat too much and I hurt. <laughs> um, do you collect <clears throat> anything? Collect anything? Huh? No. Do books count? Uh, comic slash manga, maybe some models of anime characters. All right. Models and statues of monsters, dragons, right. or animals. I feel like those could be combined. <laughs> um, I collect game cards. Okay, they know their audience. Uh, their audience. Um, yeah. I collect various animal bones, keep live pet insects, and one time I found an owl pellet. That was awesome. Who the fuck? Do you guys collect anything like CDs? And then there's like four <laughs> options for collecting like anime. <laughs> and animal belongings, <laughs> animal scraps. What do I collect anything? Do you collect anything? Just anything. <laughs> I'm a kleptomaniac. You're a maximalist. I, I think am. whatever can decorate your walls you collect. I collect candles. Yeah. And I collect When I was a All right, this is gross. When I was a kid, I used to collect my own skin. <laughs> really? I used to my feet peel in the summertime? Uh-huh. And I I'd, I'd peel them in big strips. And I would keep them. Oh. In a bag? Or like... No, just on my dresser. <laughs> my dad came in one day and said, what the <laughs> fuck is that? I said, it's my foot skin. He said, throw it away. <laughs> Clean it. Um, That's my cross I bear. So what would you say? Do you collect anything? I would say collect anything. Huh? No, I'm going to say do books count. Um, uh, do I? I don't even know how to... I'm going to say collect anything. Huh? No. I don't really collect anything. Yeah, you don't really... Everything I, you buy is with intention. Yeah, I mean, I don't, like, have any connection to anything that I own. Like, when mm. I moved from South Carolina to California, I gave everything away. That is so scary to me. Nothing has any value to me except my cats and, like, my memories. And not even my pictures, because I don't even back up my phone. I just delete everything. Oh, my God. I'm like, well, I forget that forever. You are living on the edge. <laughs> I, oh, I'm like, the concert ticket of when I was 11. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, like burn what? it. Yeah, <laughs> you throw away all my stuff. I walk in the venue, throw it away. <laughs> Can't get back inside. <laughs> How are you in technology? Do you like it? Are you good at handling it? Huh? I hate all that stuff. I leave that to other people. Well, anyway. I can manage it, but I sometimes have to ask for help. Let's just do the most extreme one. Um, I know a lot. Some might call me a nerd, but I bet they'd be jealous if they knew what I could do. That's both of our answers. Who's like, wait, wait, wait. How are you with technology? I know a lot. Some might call me a nerd, but I bet they'd be jealous. Yeah. Are you good with technology? If I tell you, you're going to be jealous. Yeah. You don't want me to answer that. <laughs> what do you do? Wait, what do you do? <laughs> He's a hacker. <laughs> He's the one that cracks his knuckles and says, we're in. <laughs> he writes these quizzes. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say um, pretty average. I think I know how to use everything I use, but I can't do anything com complex. Yeah. I can't back up my phone. Yeah. But I can go on Twitter. That's your limit. What are you? Um, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I would say I can program anything. It's a lie, but I'm going to say it. It's religious views, maybe. I believe in God and follow his teachings. His. I believe in God, but I don't go to a place of worship and I try my best to follow his teachings. Uh, there's probably a God, but I'm more open-minded about the idea. My mind is open to anything. I'll do that one. I don't believe in God. I believe in something else. I'm an atheist. What do I... I'm, gonna, I, I'm not an atheist because atheist is not just not believing in God. Yeah. Um... Oh. You're an expat Christian. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say my mind is open to anything. Okay, well I'm picking that too. No, I'm gonna say I, gonna I don't. I don't believe in God. Here, I'm okay. gonna say I don't believe in God. But I, I don't believe in anything else. You wanna read this? Favorite color: green, mm -hmm. turquoise, light blue, dark blue, purple, pink, black, white, red, orange, yellow. Wow, really gave us the full spectrum. Mm-hmm. What are you picking? Red. Turquoise. I love red. How big are you? I don't mean height. What the fuck? Is that's that so rude. rude. The options are that's none of your business. Massive, goddamn. <laughs> Massive, goddamn. <laughs> Rather chubby, I guess. Average, thank goodness. This is so fat phobic. This is unbelievable. Slightly under average, slim. I'm sort of bony. I'm well built, muscly. <laughs> Someone described. How big are you? Massive. <laughs> God damn. Or like someone's like, how big is Sarah? Average. Thank goodness. Yeah, thank God. 
<laughs> I'm gonna say average, thank goodness. I'm saying rather chubby, I guess. <laughs> I'm not. I'm only okay with the average part, not the thank goodness part. Yeah, this is incredibly loaded. Yeah. <gasps> oh my god, I love my result. Wait, which, wait, mine's still loading. Oh no, no, no. What are you? A horse. <gasps> I'm a domestic cat. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I would love to be a cat. Okay, I'll take horse. Mm -hmm. Bitch, fuck a toucan. But I still am. I know in my soul I'm a wolf. And yeah. Fuck you for saying I'm not. I just don't see it. That's so. Well, you know what? My identity erasure. When you laugh, um, it does <laughs> it does call other people to you. <laughs> like a toucan. Yeah, like a howl. Yeah. Like a whoo, and then all the other wolves come. Yeah, that's fair. Everyone starts laughing with you. Yeah, the wheeze. Yeah, I'm a cat because I do shit in the box and sleep on top of Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep on my chest yes. with your asshole in my face. <laughs> Look at my stamp. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a domestic cat, which I feel like, you know, cats are cute and also like cats can be sexy. <laughs> a cat a cat persona. I have to hide my cat. Yeah. No, yeah, they, they can't. Don't be. be out of my room. <laughs> I mean I, I think that's pretty accurate. Would I buy a fursuit of a cat would that creep out Dopey? Yeah. I just show up in a huge cat costume and Dopey's like, this is Whoa. Whoa. No. Have you seen those videos of like the owners who are in a cat suit and the cat's like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. They're like wearing a mask and they like scare the cat and the cat yeah. just runs away. Yeah. yeah. It's good stuff. I couldn't <laughs> do that. The TikTok of the girl who's like, your cat's like, oh, no, 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 no. You're <laughs> not getting a dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, girl. Mm -hmm. um, We've been putting this section off out of respect, even though we've talked about sex for the majority of this what episode. Are what are you talking about, sex? I want to talk about yiffing and nodding. Oh, okay. We're going to use these terms incorrectly. You know, like yeah. when a, like an adult is like, you know, you're Twittering. It's That's like, bae as fuck. Yeah, and it's like, mom, dad, go to sleep. Yeah. All right, so I'm so sorry to the furry community. If we, furry community in general for this whole episode, we're sorry. Mm -hmm. They're like, it's kind of correct. Yeah. But not really. Yeah. All right, so yif. A slang word used in the furry fandom with various meanings. Originally being something as simple as a greeting. In the furry fandoms, foxish, foxish language. I take it back. I'm not a wolf. I'm a fox. Why? Because I want to be. Just now, I decided. This reminds me of like that song. What does the fox say? And then yeah. all the furries were like, "Yiff." Yeah. We've literally talked about this. <laughs> like it's science. <laughs> you missed the meeting. Um. So over time, it gained more explicit meanings, referring to, of course, sexual intercourse between furries and the onomata onomatopoeic onomatopoeic sound produced by that. Turning yiffing into a term for sexual intercourse between furries is what it is today. Is yiffing onomatopoeic? Yeah. If I heard yeah. if I heard yiff, I would not assume two furries having sex or even just a fox. It's because you don't know about all this. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I understand spelunking. That's an onomatopoeia. Spelunk. Yiff is not. I, I if I heard someone say yiff, I wouldn't be like. Oh, and how often are you in the room where it happens? Never. You, you know what? You're right. Oh my god. It's that scene from Hamlet, but it's two furries. <laughs> Room where it trying happens. to think, have I ever had sex in a winter coat? Maybe I could relate a little bit. No. The sound of corduroy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, it can be used as an interjection. Oh, yiff. <laughs> an adjective. That's yiffing fantastic. <laughs> 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 or a noun. <laughs> Such, you're, you're a good yiff. <laughs> One time a guy referred to me as a good fuck. And I said, Really? That is the most demeaning thing that's ever been said to me. A good fuck? Fuck? He said, yeah, you're a good fuck. I said, should I kill myself? Oh, my God. I've never, no one's ever said that to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Oh, and thank you, Stanley, for including some memes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Throw this up on the screen later. All right, moving on to nodding, a term used, hello? Nodding. A term used to describe a person receiving a canine's penis. Why specifically a canine? Yeah. With a knot describing the section at the base of a canine's penis <laughs> that with swells up upon ejaculation. With a knot describing the section of the base. The base is the top or the tip? The base is the... The base, the, the... Like the where the balls connect? Maybe. I am... Um, describing the, the section at the base of a canine. Yeah. The balls. It looks like a knot? Apparently. You know, I, it would make sense if maybe they came up with a term for like ducks because ducks have like corkscrew dicks. That would oh, make yeah. sense why there's like, you know, it's called corkscrewing. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, because yeah. duck dick. That's good. But, but nodding, I've, I mean, I, is that that like, you know, red lipstick, your dick moment with your oh, dog? Yeah. 
It's like, this come is on. Gross. <laughs> it's gross. Well, you know what? When we said we're going to talk about the weird parts of the internet, <laughs> yes. we've made it, guys. Final I, stop here. But we're, there's literally like four other like uh, like terms that we could have discussed, and you went straight to like the sex ones. <laughs> because what the fuck? You know what I mean? Um. So another one is um. So are you done with the the nodding? I am done with yiffing and nodding. Thank you guys so much for your time. Nodding sounds like you know two dicks get tangled. It does. Mm-hmm. Is this a gay term? I don't think so. It just doesn't say anything about gay. I, I just am having a hard time with the penis swells upon ejaculation. Well, is it like are they trying to like skirt around getting hard? You know, like I would assume like getting hard. Maybe that's what they meant. But do do canines dicks get hard <laughs> at the base? You know what? I don't want to know. Um, <laughs> there's another term called persecution, a term that describes the perceived persecution of furries by elements outside the fandom. Commonly mm. debated by furries and critics, some claiming it to be a legitimate form of discrimination, while others find it a severe overreaction. Is that the right word, discrimination? No, it's persecution. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Um, if I were to wear something unusual outside and mm-hmm. someone were to beat me as a result, mm-hmm. I don't think that that would be a type of discrimination. I think that would be someone just reacting to my strange... Fucking weirdo! <laughs> yes. Assless chaps with yes. nothing underneath. Uh, yeah. I do understand... It's definitely a legitimate form of bullying. I would say that. I would not say discrimination. Do we think that the furry community is wide enough to be persecuted as a whole? Um... Well, I mean, like, no, like when you get hired at a job, they can't discriminate based on they can't discriminate age, sex, gender, fursona. <laughs> you have to put it on your job application. <laughs> I'm a I'm a white wolf. Oh, that's really touchy here. Yeah. We don't do that. A popular piece associated with persecution is, quote unquote, standing proud. A drawing of an anthropomorphic fox standing in front of a gay pride rainbow colored yeah! flag and created by this guy in 2004 it was created to be a statement about the dire state of gay rights the piece's popularity has made it subject to misrepresentation parody and ridicule so basically it's this uh fox standing in front of a gay pride flag and so people thought it would be like a a gay thing you walk into a frat guy's house and instead of like a (laughs) mega flag it's this flag it's like whoa interesting i am it's persecution it sounds a bit a little bit far-fetched but let's move on. But it's valid nonetheless. <laughs> um, so there is... Some, let's get into the... <laughs> <laughs> what? The um, scandals of the fur- furry community. Okay. Hashtag Tony Tiger Gate. Oh, wow, yeah. So this happened um, a few years ago, and it refers to the hashtag name given to a scandal surrounding the massive block of furry Twitter users who berated... Tony, Tony the Tiger, the Kellogg's mascot, mm-hmm. with a flood of lewd and lascivious demands tweeted at the corporate account by members of the furry fandom. Tony the Tiger started blocking furries just left and right just yeah. because it was like, show me that dick, <laughs> <laughs> drop the nudes. After the blockings, the furries went to Chester the Cheetah of Cheetos. But rather than blocking the accounts, Chester replied positively to the influx of tweets, as he should. Well, Tony the Tiger is a cop, and then Chester is Cheetah he? is like, he's a pothead. Chester the Cheetah is a rebel. Like, Tony he's the Tiger's like, you're great if you, like, he's like, he's definitely a cop, and yeah. it makes sense why he would he's block you. He's a high you. school football coach. <laughs> when I used to write for, like, Denny's, I would, like, Every time there's like a pitch for tweets, I'd like incorporate BTS because I love BTS. Yeah. And so like any time we, I'd like tweet about BTS because they went through. Like I just like talked to all the BTS people. I'm like, hey guys, who who's your bias? But yeah, so blocking people. Yeah, fun, fun. Chester the Cheetah standing Jimin. But it seems it seems like he would be like chill. Chester the Cheetah. Chester the Cheetah is the uncle that gives you beer. Yeah, and cigs. Mm-hmm. And he like lets you like go on the walk with him before Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Tony the Tiger, where were you on Mm -hmm. January 6th, 2021? (laughs) Tony the Tiger was at the insurrection? an insurrectionist. (laughs) (laughs) on a Viking hat. So there are subcultures of furries, um, because furries are obviously fur. Mm -hmm. There's scalies. Yeah! Cedric Diggory, he's a snake. (laughs) He's a snake. A furry term used to describe anthropomorphic creatures of the reptile and amphibian variety. And then probably, I feel like this is the most widely accepted variation of what could be considered a furry. Mm-hmm. Is, and I'm, I'm about to butcher the pronunciation, 
kimonomimi, um, which is animal ears, essentially. So it's characters that typically appear predominantly human, except for the added animal-like qualities. Think Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> With the cat ears. Is Ariana Grande a furry? Yes! This makes, like, this is, like, the, the middle ground. Like, where you want to wear, like, a costume. It's, like, the middle ground between costume and then, like, furry. Mm. You know? Where you're, like, you have the cat tail, cat ears, maybe the claws. But yeah, you can't, like, commit. Gloves. Yeah, but it's also, like, probably more cost effective to be one of these. Because, like, yeah. the ears are, like, less ex- Like, no teenager, if you're a teenager being a furry... Is gonna buy like a twenty two hundred dollars suit shipped to your parents' house. Yeah, like what is this life size <laughs> box we just got? The website has discreet packaging, <laughs> but it's literally a life size <laughs> box. It's six foot. <laughs> it's a bunch of dildos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, this is more so like the animated characters will sometimes have. Mm-hmm. You know, clearly they're human, but they have animal like features and then that's then translated into real life so i feel like this is the most you see these sold at hot topic and spencers and whatever so when i see this on the street i don't really bat an eye Mm -hmm. no i don't think animal ears are that weird and that's mainly because like i wore a vest in high school uh who am i to literally judge anyone's like choices you can never i was that person with a vest over like a you know short sleeve shirt yeah i was that i thought it was cute it was at the time ashley tisdale core (laughs) Disney core. Yes. Yeah, this is when I see and also with this new wave of people younger than us on TikTok obsessing over the like 2006 to 2009 culture yeah. of like shutter shades and all that. It's all back. Mm-hmm. Like this is kind of they overlap. Yeah. I mean, it's like this I would say yeah, exactly. With the tails. Like there were bitches at my bitches is a <laughs> strong term. <laughs> strong term. But there were bitches at my high school that would come and sit at 7.30 a.m. with a foxtail in. Yeah. In algebra. Okay. What are you doing, girl? First off, they usually didn't bother anyone. So I think it is unusual, but, but they're harmless. But I look at their tail the whole time. Oh, my gosh. I, I showed up to high school with a full face of makeup. Literally <laughs> woke too, up an hour before. Oh, they clip on their tail and they come to school and they're the bad guy. Hey, everyone puts their pants on <laughs> two feet and one tail at a time. Yeah. I, so I don't think that's that unusual. I think we all have our different rituals or interests that like could be deemed weird by the outside world. That's but fair. Me, me like saying take off your tail with my One Direction entire backpack and you notebooks literally and have pencils. Disney tattoos. And I do. And you go to Disney like in Anaheim. <laughs> like oh frequently. God. I've never met anyone who goes to Disneyland quite as much as you. <laughs> Who are we? And I'm like, take that fucking foxtail off. <laughs> we talk about like, you know, like <laughs> former, former Christians, like he who is without sin shall cast the first stone. You have a, you Disney mouse ears on and yeah, you're throwing stones at furries. Oh, I'm throwing stones at everyone. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, I literally quite honestly <laughs> fall into this category and I'm like, take the tail and well, yeah, paws off. When you go off. to Disney, do you buy the ears? Yeah. You are literally <laughs> one and the same. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called Disney bounding yes because they don't let you dress up as a character because mm-hmm. you could be confused for someone who actually works there yeah children could like see you and be like that's Elsa but then Elsa's getting drunk at like you know the yeah. Harry Potter's tavern it's, or something yeah it's me in a tankini that's blue <laughs> and I have a blonde wig on is there a water park element to Disneyland no but there should be so why are you in a tankini <laughs> Splash Mountain <laughs> I lose my bottom to Splash Mountain. I'm walking around with my puss out. Is that Brittany Broski? <laughs> oh my god. We have fun here. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I would say like, in conclusion, I think furries are like, not that unusual. I love furries. Yeah, I think they're in their cult era and soon it's going to be going to become a religion. Who's the furry god? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's the furry god? I mean, I don't know, but they did have a higher power question. But it's just like, yeah. I've Yeah, all in all, furries do no harm. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a very wholesome activity. Mm-hmm. The way that, like we said, drag and all of that could be considered, it's art. Yeah. And I think this is a very uh, non-conventional way of art, mm-hmm. but it's art nonetheless. Yeah, and there are like obviously bad like sex of this community, but that's with every community. Yes. You know, like there are like, there are like j- people who are like horrible and they like resell like baby items, you know, like it's just with every community. I think they're not hurting anyone. Most yep. of them are not hurting anyone. I would agree. 
Yeah, and I and I get it. I think some animated characters are attractive. <laughs> they are, and mm-hmm. who, anyone who denies that, get help. Is a liar. Is <laughs> lying. <laughs> Balto is sexy. Balto is okay. I'm gay, but Balto is hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right thanks guys so much for listening this has been violating community guidelines with Brittany and sarah make sure to like comment s- rate subscribe subscribe youtube download spotify. anywhere you get your podcast apple podcast yeah. spotify it's five stars Thank leave you. us a comment on youtube let us know your persona take the quiz yeah let us know if you're a toucan too i'm if sorry you're a toucan that quiz sucked i know buzzfeed be better that did not give me what i needed mm-hmm if right. you could just pick one off the top of your head, what would you pick? Uh, probably just a cat, like yeah, a house cat. Yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. I'm sticking with fox. Fox wolf hybrid. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Right. Thank you guys for listening. We will talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.